Howdy, and welcome to episode 2 of All No Man's Sky updates ranked and reviewed. In this episode, we're going to be covering all of the updates in 2018. So that'll be the next update, the Abyss, and Visions. In case you're new to this, last episode we ranked and reviewed the first four titled updates that took place between 2016 and 2017. And the way we rank these updates is I kind of give like a mini review of each one and at the end of that I assign it various scores covering different attributes and, and parts of the, the update based on the original four pillars, three additional pillars that I added myself, and then multiplayer. So overall we have eight pillars that I rank each and every update based on. And this gives me an overall score, which I then use to rank them overall. While I do have control over the score, I try to keep it as objective as possible. Even though I understand it's still 100% subjective, the scores I'm giving. That being said, I don't really have too much influence over the overall rankings. However, I do have a second list that you can see here on screen, where I rank them just based completely on personal bias. So if I like the name of one, I might make it number three, you know, ahead of all these other updates, just for the fun of it. So feel free to get mad at me for that list, <laughs> since it's it's pretty much BS. But uh, the other list I am trying to keep uh, relatively objective. That being said, you know, some updates focus on certain elements, especially lately. Updates have been focusing on single elements. So I'm anticipating that a lot of the earlier big updates are going to rate higher overall simply because they they touch every base at least a little bit whereas like the newer updates tend to focus on specific things and so they may not rank as well but i guess we'll find out together so another thing another thing to mention is that a lot of these numbers are based off of a spreadsheet i've been putting together over the years so i've been playing since day one and a couple years ago i decided i would uh I wanted to compare some of the updates, so I ended up putting together an Excel spreadsheet, which I will not be showing you because, you know, spoilers. But basically, a lot of the scores you're going to see, pretty much all of the scores, are taken from this spreadsheet. And these scores were assigned at a time when I was more intimately familiar with these updates. So like looking back like three or four years now, I might have forgotten some details, but back then I was more acutely aware of them. So I, I tend to trust what I wrote at the time, although in a couple of places I, I, I may question myself, but you know, sometimes you just got to trust the, trust the method, right? So without further ado, let's move on to the first update we're looking at today. So after the Atlas Rises update in 2017, summer 2017, we actually had to wait an entire year for the next update, which was, of course, titled Next. <laughs> and this was a, a heavily anticipated update, even more than Atlas Rises, because of how intense Atlas Rises had been and because of the amount of time between them. So we didn't really know what to expect. We thought it would be something crazy, especially with the ARG leading up to it, which was really cool. So funny enough, I actually... Um, I actually ended up taking the second half of the week off to play next. I, I got my wisdom teeth out the morning of in order to get the day off of work. So <laughs> uh, totally worth it. But what did next actually add to the game? Well, version 1.5 released July 24th, 2018. Next included way too many notable features to count, but I'm going to just go over the most notable ones here. So for me, the biggest thing was a complete universe overhaul. So it was a visual overhaul. They reset all the planets, terrain generation, biomes, all that stuff was just completely different. But what I think is a bigger deal for a lot of people was that they added full multiplayer. So that meant full synchronous multiplayer between you and three of your friends. And I believe you could also see randos on planets too. So. In order to make this possible, they also added a third person perspective that includes full character models and customization. And it also allowed you to fly your ship in third person. So that was really cool for the first time ever you could see who you were playing as. They added frigate fleets, which was a new type of 
vessel that you could recruit to join your capital ship in space. And you could send these on individual expeditions and things like that, and it opened up some new avenues of gameplay and money making. And then they also, on top of all that, they also overhauled the building completely. So instead of just using prefabs and rooms and stuff like that, you're adding now they gave us the ability to add floors and ceilings and walls and to sort of build in any shape or structure we wanted to. So completely overhauled that and a bunch of other content that I'll go over shortly. So overall, this was a huge patch. It pretty much lived up to expectations of being uh, game changing in every sense of the word. So looking at the patch notes, what do they highlight? They say next introduces a full multiplayer experience near unlimited base building, command of freighter armadas, a graphical overhaul, and more. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of big things. And they even mark it here as the two year anniversary of No Man's Sky, which is pretty cool. I remember this was the one where a lot of people felt like this was where No Man's Sky redeemed itself. But honestly, I think by Atlas Rises, it had already fulfilled pretty much all the promises it had made. And yes, that includes multiplayer. So, <laughs> starting with multiplayer again. Team up with a small group of friends and explore the universe together, or be joined by random travelers. Yeah, so this was this was life-changing, obviously, and it changed the entire, not the entire focus of the game, but for a lot of people, how they played it. And a lot of people were pretty upset they didn't like the idea of someone being able to join their game and, and kill them. And that was, that was the thing, the original implementation of multiplayer wasn't the best. So basically, if you were starting your game, people could just hit like multiplayer and they could just join a random person's game. So if you're on your base building a planet, a random player would join you and then they might start messing stuff up because back then they didn't have all the base building permissions they have now. So it was kind of a mess or they could just show up and kill you. You know what I mean? And the thing was, there was no benefit for them. They don't get your stuff. But it would just kind of ruin the experience for you <laughs> so yeah it really sucked um but besides those those nitpicks like the fact that i could actually play with my friends was so cool and the original way they did similar to nexus missions th the original way they did multiplayer missions was actually from the bridge of your freighter so it was like uh, taking contracts as a mercenary and you and your friend would take a contract and then complete it and both get the rewards it was really cool I really enjoyed that. So the next item here is community engagement, which is I think when they started running the weekend missions and things like that. And yeah, they're emphasizing that it's free for all players, because you know No Man's Sky never charges for anything. Ooh, the Galactic Atlas website. So not a direct feature in the game, but this was pretty cool at the time. You could submit points of interest and people could view it on the website. I have a few points of interest up there. They haven't really done much with it since then, but it was it was cool to see Euclid like a map of it. Base building. So this one was huge. Hundreds of new base parts have been added to unlock more creative possibilities, which they did. So in addition to just giving us hundreds of new base pieces, they also, sorry if you can hear my cat, they also increase the size and complexity of bases. So it used to be you could own one base, it would be in a predetermined location. You would like walk up to the little prefab and select it as your own base. Then you could build within that little space using prefabricated parts and with limited complexity. After next, you could place a base computer anywhere. Anywhere on a planet, on top of a settlement, on top of anything you wanted. And then you could build anything. You could build like really long in one direction. You could build much taller than before. You could own multiple bases now. So you could have multiple bases on the same planet or in different galaxies. You could do, it was pretty much unlimited for the, for most practical purposes. So that was really, really cool. So third person, of course, that's a huge deal. They added gestures with that. It says here ship controls in both views now allow for true low flight mode. Which, yeah, with the next update, with Atlas Rises, they had improved low flight, but with Next, you could actually fly into caves. So, <laughs> they made it exactly the thing people were asking for. Character customization. This is really cool. And they, they went all out. They just give you all of the options right from the get-go, which I still applaud them for. 
Of course, nowadays there are a lot of things you can unlock, but it's all been added. It, it doesn't feel like they've held things back. You know what I mean? With the exception of maybe jetpacks. Pretty much all the jetpacks you have to unlock, but still, overall, I love the the customization and that they went even beyond what I would have expected because I would have thought you just customize your spacesuit, but they let you choose what race you want to be. You can be a, a little geck if you want. So, you know, hats off to them. It's really impressive. So freighter enhancements, and by that they mean being able to have an entire fleet of frigates. And I'm, I'll am i probably do an entire video on frigates pretty soon, but I love these and it was so cool. You see, there aren't that many interior spaces in No Man's Sky, so having essentially five new interior spaces to explore was a huge deal for me. And also it was pretty cool that you could interact with them and your your captains would give you materials and things and I know it was, it's a pretty cool thing crafting and resources so they pretty much redid the periodic table for no man's sky and um, it says here reworked and rebalanced to increase consistency and realism and I guess that makes some sense they had just a bunch of random materials back then but you know I did appreciate the original charm but honestly it, it doesn't make that much of a difference at the time it was really jarring but nowadays I actually really like the periodic table they ended up with so in addition to that they've also it says here expanded with unique substances and items to find based on the planet's biome and weather which yeah I think that's referring to um, when it says weather, that's referring to activated elements on stormy planets. And I think you also find like the way you find paraffinium on lush planets. I think that's what it's referring to, biome. Not just that, but they added deployable tech that you could pick up. One of the things that I'm still kind of mixed on was that they added refiners. It's pretty cool that you can refine things. Like it feels more like a crafting game, but it's also a bit grindy in my opinion because it takes time to refine things. But this was the update where they added it. Procedural tech. So this was a huge deal. Because, you know, No Man's Sky, the infinite universe, is supposed to be all procedural. But prior to this, there was only a certain number of upgrades you could get. And they were all the same for every player. So now they added procedural technology. Procedural upgrades, which is what you see nowadays in the vendors at space stations. And so it could have procedural stats and there were different classes. It was just really, really cool. And I, I feel like this was much needed for the game. Analysis visor enhancements. Yeah, they added a bunch of info there. Missions and structures. Yeah, they redid the opening mission to add base building, which yeah, I feel like it still takes too long. And at the time, it took even longer than it does now, I think. They added guild envoys to space stations. Very nice and added new mission types, which is always appreciated. So graphical enhancements, it's its really difficult to explain, but even as nice as Atlas Rises looked, uh, Next looked even nicer in my opinion. Sometimes things looked a little too clean, but overall it was an improvement in fidelity. I also like that they added rings. Oh yeah, and that also included updating the visuals of all the ships to add more detail. So it's kind of a minor thing. The models were the same, but I think they improved like material and textures and things like that. So one of the, the big differences with the new terrain generation was that they added continents, which is still like one of the best things they've ever added to the game. Because previously, anywhere you landed on a planet, th the planet had a uniform sort of noise that would generate it. So anywhere you landed had the same distribution of lakes or rivers or oceans or islands or mountains. So anywhere you went was identical. After next, we had continents. So you could have oceans, you could have areas with like no water, you could have coasts. It, it really improved variety in my opinion because depending on where you land, you're gonna get a different experience. They also updated the clouds with new volumetric clouds, which I don't, you have to be delusional to prefer the old style of clouds. Basically, the old clouds were pretty much like a noise generation, and they only rendered in a circle directly above you, so you never had clouds on the horizon. Because if you look to the horizon, that was too far to render clouds, so you could only look up and see clouds. 
and I think there are some people who prefer those clouds, but I thought it was really, really, really immersion breaking. Never ever being able to see, you know, clouds that weren't just uh, generic noise directly above you. So now with the volumetric clouds, they weren't perfect, but they did allow you to have clouds over the horizon and they did allow different types of clouds and different cloud formations. So a lot more variety that way. UI overhaul, yeah, they tend to do that a lot. Quality of life. Inventory stacks can now be split, which is pretty cool. The space station marketplace. Well, yeah, so they updated space stations as well. These have pretty much been the same since launch with like little adding a little booth here or there. But this is where they open them up into the layout that we still see today. And funny enough, you could tell they had they left space open for future vendors, which they've since been filling out. But at the time, I remember thinking, wow, there's a lot of space in here. So exploration, fauna and flora. This is a big one. So obviously terrain generation made exploring, you know, new, but they also added a new type of ruin which weren't really procedural, but it was like an archaeology dig. So you'd dig up keys and you'd find the chest and then you'd get procedural loot. So that was pretty cool. And you could also uh, use the terrain manipulator to dig stuff up. Like, uh, I think they only had buried tech modules at the time, but you know, since then they've added a lot. So creatures were now like overhauled, so they did behave a lot better. And I remember seeing video near the release of Neck that looked like Jurassic Park was like a dinosaur chasing a whole herd of, of like deer or cows or something and it looks so cool like th they really did improve things with next i remember they also changed the models for the sentinels which i actually prefer the old ones but i understand they had to redo them so that uh, the sentinel walkers would have new uh, armor pieces and stuff but still i prefer the old ones and they also added new hazardous flora and fauna so by that, they mean they added one new alien type, which I'm sure you're familiar with these guys, the biological horrors that spawn from whispering eggs. Those guys were pretty cool. And then they added the cave toxins, which, you know, eh, they're mostly annoying if I'm being honest, but at least there was something dangerous in caves again. Audio, they added all kinds of audio updates. And then if you look at the patch notes here, it is just a ton more stuff but those are the majority of things so overall I really love this update I know some people felt like it reduced variety which in a sense it did um, but that we'll cover that in a little bit but overall my impressions were very positive and the majority of players and the industry at large also would tend to agree with me but let's take a look at the scores okay so for exploration I give it a 10 now I know what you're gonna say. It's like, oh, what about the only like one color of water and only four palettes for lush planets? And yeah, I, I hear you. That stuff was addressed pretty soon after. But the reason I put a 10 for Explorer was because the way I rate rank these is how much did this patch do for this pillar? How much did they focus on it? And how much did it add? And it added continents. It added new types of atmospheres with new types of clouds. It added new archaeology. It added new space stations with, believe it or not, additional variety and procedural generation. It also added procedural tech, which encourages you to explore new systems. It added new interiors to explore. And also you look around trying to find new uh, frigates to, to purchase. So it's it's hard to quantify, but there was a whole lot of a whole lot of things that it added. Not to mention, you know, ring planets, new biome types, and just all kinds of kooky things to see. And oh, another thing I didn't even mention, it also added more variety in system types. So now we had normal systems, we have abandoned systems with abandoned space stations, which were so cool the first time my friend and I found one. And they also added uncharted systems without any civilization whatsoever. So overall, there was just a whole lot more to see. For fight, I gave it an eight because they did overhaul the Sentinels. They added new behaviors and they made the Sentinel walkers into more of a boss. So instead of just being a bigger Sentinel that shoots at you, 
Now you had to disable its armor and then it would like have a second stage where it changed its attacks. So it felt like more detailed combat. They also gave Sentinel drones the ability to heal walkers and quads in battle so there was a bit more strategy involved. On top of that they also added the new biological horrors which were a new type of enemy to fight. So overall there was a whole lot for people who enjoyed the combat of the game. For trade, I give it a 9 because they overhauled the entire trade system and they gave us procedural loot in the form of archaeology. So a whole bunch of a bunch of great things for trade. For survive, I give it a 7 because most updates don't do much with survival mechanics, but because Next was overhauling so many systems, it also overhauled the survival systems. So I had to give it a an above average score for that. So for story, I usually, uh, I'm actually kind of surprised I gave it a 5, which is an average score. But I think what I was referring to here is story and lore, because it added new mission types with, you know, new procedural lore. But it also added new interactions with NPCs, which also count as story and lore, in addition to Guild Envoy missions multiplayer missions which was completely new and an overhauled uh, tutorial mission so while the story itself wasn't really improved it added a whole bunch of new mission types and a lot of almost pseudo narratives so i'm guessing that's why i gave it a five but again this score was was written way back when so for quality of life a nine because it improved pretty much everything Building, I also give a 9 because again, it expanded the scope and the limitations of building to the point where you could pretty much build anything. And then multiplayer, I give it a 10 because, I mean, honestly, this is as much of a multiplayer addition as you can ask for. It went from barely being able to see another player there in Atlas Rises, or just seeing a representation of another player, to literally just being fully synchronous co-op multiplayer. So hats off to them. So overall that averages out to 8.375 or rounded to 8.4. So if we're looking at our previous rankings an 8.4 would actually be number one. So the new order would be next Atlas Rises, Pathfinder, Foundation, and then the day one patch. Now for my personal my personal Kanaji ranking I actually give it a 9.5 so not quite a 10 like Atlas Rises and again this is just personal BS for some reason Atlas Rises captured my imagination a little bit more than Next did overall I think Next made a lot of important changes um, but a lot of it was built on what Atlas Rises did now I know you're gonna say wow that's complete BS right I didn't really explain that well and I don't have to because this is a personal ranking but overall, based on more objective criteria, it's definitely the most significant update up to this point. But let me know in the comments below if you disagree with either of my, <laughs> either of the rankings here. But don't spend too long because we're moving on to the next update, which is not titled next, but The Abyss, released October 29th, 2018. So this was version 1.7 and the abyss was a much smaller update it was it was sort of a surprise update they let us know ahead of time but based on the release date and based on the name we thought it would be something more like space abyss but it ended up being a complete overhaul of the oceans which is a good thing because while next improved a lot of things it did not improve the oceans it pretty much left them empty for all intents and purposes so this was a pretty impressive update because it showcased Hello Games ability to update a part of the game without doing a complete universe reset, which was something they couldn't do before, but it was pretty obvious that with Next they had built in hooks so they could update only certain parts of the algorithm. So notable features for the Abyss include a complete overhaul of underwater biomes. So it went from having one underwater biome to having five, I believe. And then it added a submarine exocraft, the Nautilon, which was something I never asked for, but honestly, 
I fell in love with it. So it also added underwater building parts, a new storyline, which I'll get into, and new underwater creatures, which I will also elaborate on. So it was all underwater focused, but it actually added a lot more to the game than I would have expected. So if we're going to the patch notes here, we can take a look. And by the way, I love the artwork for the Abyss. They really went classic sci-fi with it. So creatures of the deep. So they added all kinds of new creatures. Those included not just like the regular underwater creatures you'd see, but it also added abyssal horrors, which they came in a couple varieties. One of them are like a giant angler fish and the other are these creepy eyeball guys that you'll sometimes find on the bottom of the ocean. And it was cool to have these new like almost horror themed predators that you would encounter at various points. <laughs> I still remember getting scared by my first abyssal horror. Um, because I played without reading the patch notes, so that was really cool. They also added jellyfish, which I think a lot of people forget, but sometimes when you're mining materials underwater, a bunch of jellyfish will pop out and chase you, and they're surprisingly dangerous. Like, individually, they're not a problem, but if you're mining a lot of materials and, like, two sets of them pop out at once, you could find yourself in some trouble, especially when you're trying to manage not just them, but other predators nearby or your oxygen as well so it's a pretty cool update to sea creatures oh yeah and also they added underwater crabs which was pretty cool so on top of that they also added new underwater resources so you have crystallized sulfur living pearls hadal cores and a few other items but what makes these cool was that unlike other materials where you'd pretty much just pick them up these all had mechanics attached to them. So for example, the crystallized sulfur, you would find a volcanic vents. So you would need to, you know, time your harvesting of them with the eruption of the vent or else you'd take damage. And then similarly with the living pearls, those are inside of these giant snapping clams. So in order to get them, you would have to shoot the clam and it would open up for a short period of time before snapping closed again. If you were too close, and it opens up, it would damage you and push you back. But you have to get it before it closes or else it'll snap on you and also damage you. So it was like a small mini game, which is, I wish I wish they continued to add more unique mechanics like that. And then Hadal cores back then could only be taken from alluring specimens, which is where abyssal horrors would nest. So all of these new materials, you would have to take on something else. I mean, even to that end, if you took out the abyssal ores with the big eyes, you would get a, a big slimy eye as well. So all kinds of stuff to discover underwater. So the next thing they added here is aquatic missions. So the Dreams of the Deep storyline was pretty cool. In practice, it wasn't that engaging to play, but the story was pretty interesting. It was about, a, I believe, a crashed freighter that crashed on like a water world. And I always love to see new lore. But in addition to that, it was also the first mission in No Man's Sky to award a new piece of clothing. So let me scroll down here. Yeah, the diving helmet is, is something you could only obtain after completing that mission, which I wish there were more missions like that and more rewards like that in the game where you could get unique uh, visual customizations. But it was really cool. I, I wore it for a long time and, and I appreciated that. But in addition to the new storyline, they also added underwater ruins with their own storyline. So unlike the ruins that you find above ground, which are just sort of like giving you lore and somewhat the history of the different races, these underwater ruins featured the storyline of a specific person affected by the abyss, which if you don't know is kind of like a big enemy in the game, but it's only pretty much in lore, you don't really fight it but it often infects people through water. So this storyline was told through various different underwater ruins. And after you hear each piece of lore, it gives you a key. So under these ruins, you would actually find treasure chests, like sunken treasure, which is so cool, by the way. And um, you would use your key to open these up and you'd get procedural loot. And believe it or not, I'm actually on the No Man's Sky wiki. I actually hold the record for the most valuable underwater treasure ever found. I think it was like drowned shark's teeth or something. Just a little bit of trivia for you. 
but as we continue to scroll down we get to the actual biggest part of the update which was a complete visual overhaul of oceans as well as complete overhaul of ocean like biome generation so a lot of people will tell you that the abyss update ruined oceans because it reduced the amount of variety and to an extent i understand where they're coming from right the clams and the abyssal horrors and certain elements like that are are not procedural they're found in every ocean and they have like the same models and the same colors essentially so i can understand yes there's a little bit less variety there but what it did do was add four new biomes so previously there was only one biome which was coral oceans and then since then they added a whole bunch of new ones or rather four new ones and while there's not too much variety within those individual biomes the fact that they're they're so different and distinct from each other is pretty cool oh actually no they added five new biomes so six total and i i really love the look and feel of these new ones and the fact that now you can land on a planet and not know what kind of ocean it has is pretty cool so another major item from this update was the submarine the nautilon which had its own like set of upgrades and technologies and you know it might not seem that significant but I remember when the update dropped, my friend and I spent like five hours straight just exploring in our submarines. <laughs> it's a lot more fun than it looks, and I'm actually, it's one of my favorite things they added. I know I say that about a lot of things, but it's pretty cool. So they also added new building parts that have like a lot of windows that you can only build underwater. And I really love building with these. You've got glass tunnels and things, and it was pretty cool. The updated swimming controls, mm-hmm. New substances, yep, I went over these. Vehicle shop, oh yeah, they also added a new vendor to the space station where you could get procedural upgrades for all of your exocraft, including the new submarine. So that was a cool improvement. So this is kind of weird, but it says, uh, in addition to the underwater focus of the Abyss, freighters and frigates have also been enhanced. Both vessel types can now be scanned using the analysis visor and explorers can repair their friends' frigates in multiplayer. So that's kind of just a little quality of life thing. And then if you scroll down here, there were a ton more quality of life features. So overall, it was a much more focused, much smaller update than next, but it added a whole bunch of things in a whole bunch of areas. So if we're going back to our scorecard, I would give the Abyss an 8.5 for exploration because it added, it increased the amount of variety in underwater biomes from one biome to six biomes and it added a whole bunch of new creature types and a bunch of things to explore new ruins new storylines so exploration very high on this one fight i added a seven it's above average because it added new abyssal horrors so the new giant fish you'd have to fight it added the Abyssal Horrors on the sea floor, which was a new type of enemy where you have to, you actually had to fight it, but you couldn't take it out from a distance. So in order for you to kill it, you have to shoot it multiple times in the eye, but it only opens its eye to drag you in to kill you. So it's like this tug of war where you have to get close enough to where it starts dragging you in. And in that short amount of time, that's when you have to kill it. So that, so that was like a completely new combat challenge in addition to things like the jellyfish and stuff like that. So overall for combat, there's a lot of new stuff. Trade, I also gave above average because you know you have new procedural treasure and new material types and things that you can only find underwater. So that gave you another reason to go to the oceans. For survive, I also gave a seven because underwater is constantly a survival environment because you either need a submarine or you'll also need to go after the oxygen sacks that you'll find on certain kelp plants as well as like other materials that you can only get underwater so i gave it a seven above average for survival for story i give it an eight because not only did it add an entirely new storyline but it added two entirely new storylines <laughs> and both of them i enjoyed you know they're kind of mysterious kind of vague so besides the two storylines they also added underwater crash freighters and sunken ships and sunken buildings which also had their own little interactions so a lot of a lot of great stuff for story quality of life i gave a seven you know it didn't add a whole bunch of new features like it added a bunch of new game mechanics 
but for the majority of the game it didn't affect too much. It was mostly quality of life underwater. For building, I gave it an 8 because it added a ton of new base building parts and essentially expanded base building. You could build underwater, but now it gave you like dedicated things to build underwater, including a moon pool so you could like swim up into your base. So that was really cool. And then multiplayer, I gave it a 1.5 because it really didn't add much at all, but the 0.5 is because it said your friends can repair your frigates now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So overall, that averages to a 6.75, rounded to a 6.8. Alright, so if we take a look at our rankings based on score, the new rankings are number 1 next, number 2 Atlas Rises, number 3 Pathfinder, number 4 The Abyss, which surprisingly goes above Foundation based on these rankings, which is rather odd because I mean I would put Foundation above the Abyss, but th that's how the cookie crumbles. And then number six is the day one patch. So with that being said, if you take a look at my personal rankings, I'm going to put the Abyss right below Foundation. Now believe it or not on my spreadsheet, I gave both of these a nine, but overall I think foundation was a more significant update. Now, before you get angry at me putting Pathfinder below the Abyss, remember this is a personal ranking and that Pathfinder was was above the Abyss in the actual rank or score based ranking. But again, personal preference. I really love the Nautilon. I loved the overhaul. I spent a lot more time. Okay, I didn't spend more time exploring the Abyss than Pathfinder, but you know, to each their own. <laughs> no time to linger on that. We need to move on to the final update of today's episode, Visions, released November 22nd, 2018, version 1.75. Now this was a surprise update, which honestly I don't think anyone would have seen coming, except that they accidentally leaked the trailer the night before. They had uploaded it ahead of time and it was unlisted, but it had accidentally gotten added to their playlist and someone noticed it. So even though it wasn't like under people's notifications, someone just happened to notice it in the playlist. And so they shared it around and it was super impressive. And considering this came less than a month after the abyss, this was like three weeks later, uh, no one was expecting it. And I was impressed with just how much it did. So notable features include new exotic biomes. They took a whole bunch of dead biomes and they changed them into exotic biomes, which that would explain why there were so many dead planets when next released. They also added new anomalous creatures, which pretty cool. It really expanded what No Man's Sky creatures could be, it expanded the universe in a lot of ways. They added increased variety. So they increased the variety of colors, and atmospherics and a bunch of things when next came out there were only a certain number of palettes and this greatly expanded that so they also added procedural archaeology which is on certain planets you could either find buried satellites like down satellites or ancient bones and these would come in like various tiers that would be procedural in nature and give you you know different values and that was pretty cool i'll, I'll get more into that soon and then of course visual improvements you know this being called visions and all like rainbows and improved atmospherics and stuff so overall a pretty it's it's a very small update it's 0.75 this was i think the first named update where they didn't give it like a 1.8 or something as a 0.75 but i personally love this update now what's surprising to me is i often see people rank this kind of low on their tier lists and I don't understand that because as we're about to see, this covers a lot of bases. So the first bullet point here on the patch notes is new planetary biomes. That's always a big deal. Now these biomes, not quite as procedural as what you would expect. They're similar to the other exotic biomes where once you've seen one, the rest of them are kind of similar, but these were really cool. I love these things. If you look at these pictures here on screen, these are some of my favorite biomes and they all felt properly mysterious <laughs> and it actually took me a long time to find all of them. 
I, I don't think I found my last one of these, these like scaly fin planets. I didn't find one of those until like two years later. So pretty cool for exploration. And then the new creatures, they may not look like creatures, but they are. And this was so cool because, you know, previously we had had the same land creatures since launch, right? They'd been slightly updated and reworked, but it was the same stuff we'd seen for years. So these added like just completely new things. Like this is just a bubble filled with blood. Why not, right? Why not? These are crystals. This is just w one of those balls, but it rolls around. I mean, it, this stuff was so cool at the time. And it also made it really easy to get the zoology trophy. <laughs> but I love these things to this day. It was just so cool. Lush diversity. Yeah, so they, they added new grass colors, new ground colors, new atmosphere colors, new water colors, because all the water after next was blue on every planet. So this added new possibilities, which again increases variety and makes exploration more exciting. So scrolling down, they say atmospheric types and rainbows, which was mostly a visual overhaul. Exotic trophies. Now this is pretty cool. So with the exotic trophies, if you found one of these exotic worlds, you could actually pick up pieces from it and then place those in your base. So at the time there are no blueprints for these and you couldn't get them anywhere except on these planets. So if you wanted to fill your base with like rare and exotic trophies, you needed to physically visit those planets yourself and pick them up. So it made visiting these planets feel even more like a destination because you could pretty much bring a souvenir back, which is something that they haven't really continued much since Visions, but I like the idea and I wish they would add like some kind of procedural souvenir you could collect from planets. But you know, this was still a really cool addition. Let's see, archaeology. Again, another reason to explore planets. And digging them up was like another source of revenue. So again, if you didn't want to be a farmer or you didn't want to be a trader, you could simply be an archaeologist and dig these up and, and sell them on the market. And then to even further that extent, you have salvageable scrap which these were cool because where's the bones you just dug up? For these, you would have to remove all of the protective paneling and then like take the core out. And that's where you would get the, the part that would be salvageable. But in doing so, you would often trigger a new enemy type, which again, rarely add new enemies to the game. This was the corrupted Sentinel drone. And these were some gnarly looking enemies. To this day, I think they're some of the coolest looking enemies. Even though now, you know, you see them all the time with Frontiers. At the time, it was really cool to see something that you could only encounter in, in optional situations. So, again, a really cool mechanic. Storm Crystals, again, another cool mechanic. These are materials that were really valuable, but you could only pick them up during a storm. So you'd have to find an extreme storm planet, which didn't used to be very desirable. And then during a storm when you would normally be in your ship or hiding in a building or just leaving the planet, instead you're out on foot and you're looking for these storm crystals. So it was like a whole new survival mini game trying to keep your hazard protection up, trying to see in like zero visibility and collecting these rare things. So it was really, it was a really cool new mechanic. So again, there's like three new types of materials or four actually, four new types of things that or also new gameplay loops. So it was very impressive. So here it says varied hazardous flora, but I don't think that's quite true. They did add two new types of hazardous flora because it used to be there were only those swingy vines and then the ones in the caves, but they added like Venus fly traps and these big, like, I don't know what you would call these things. Loaded gas flora is what it says here, but I wouldn't say it improved variety because they just added these to every other planet, same as the vines. So now every planet has like all three of them. Whereas I think it would have been cooler if each planet picked one. So if you went to a planet and it only had, you know, Venus flytraps or it only had like the bloated gas plants. And I mean, to this day, I kind of hope they, they fix that. But, you know, at least it was cool to see something new. As always, but I wish they were a little more procedural. So sentient minerals is something I often forget is added in the visions update. And this was just a kooky little thing, again another mechanic, where basically 
sometimes you'd be mining a rock and it would just spring to life and run away. <laughs> it's just one of those cool things that makes the universe feel even more like sci-fi, makes it feel a little bit more uh, surprising. You know, little things like this really add up to making the experience more fun. And again, another new mechanic, if you chase them down and you're able to to kill the rock creature, you get even more concentrated resources. So that's pretty cool. Shared community mission progress, which not a big, I guess it's, I guess it's kind of a big deal. But basically everyone works towards a single goal in multiplayer. Um, they have new gestures and things to unlock in the Quicksilver store, which again, these would unlock when you completed tiers of the community research. This is still ongoing today, like with new stuff. Not my favorite mechanic, but you know, cool. Okay, this last thing right here is actually the biggest deal for me, maybe, which is procedural crashed freighters. So when they added crashed freighters in Atlas Rises, they only added a single model, and they were all exactly the same. So with this, they finally made them procedural, just like, you know, the freighters you see in space. So each planet has a different model. And I mean, this, this changed a lot for me. <laughs> It also changed how you explore the crash freighters, I believe. So instead of just being like six things buried, it is essentially the same thing where you're just digging things up. But now like there was a pseudo interior of the crash freighter to explore. And I always thought they were going to add like more procedural crash freighters because the pieces they use seem really modular, but they never did. Oh, well, but that's the end of the patch notes. There are a few more things at the bottom here, but overall a pretty small update, but I felt like it had a lot of impacts on gameplay. But let's take a look. And again, this was this was only a, less than a month after the abyss. So this was like three weeks later. So on the scorecard, we have an explorer of nine because not only did it add new biomes, but it added new reasons to explore. So it added new resource types, new procedural archeology, span it added trophies you could only get from the new biomes. And on top of that, it also increased the variety. So when you're exploring regular planets, now they they have more color and more diversity. So overall exploration vastly improved by visions. Fight, I give a 6.5 above average because it added the new Sentinel drone type. So any time they add a new enemy type, you're going to be above average in the fight call. For trade, I give it an 8 because again lots of new procedural treasure to dig up new opportunities for wealth and trade for survive i give a four because they did add storm crystals which is you know something you, that requires some survival elements but overall there wasn't too much in the way of of survival mechanics they they improved or added here oh yeah although they did add new hazardous flora which I guess maybe bolsters fight as well as survive, but I mean, again, mechanically not very different to what we've seen. Story, I gave it a 1 because it didn't really add any story at all. I don't think it added any lore, to be honest. Uh, quality of life, an 8. Because it added, like I said, it may not have seemed like a big update, but all these new gameplay loops, the variety, even the community missions and some other improvements they made on the back end and UI and the visual overhaul or visual improvements, it all adds up. Visions was actually my favorite era of the game until post, um, until post origins, I would say. So I really loved the game in post 175. I think it was the best No Man's Sky had ever been to that point. Building gave it a 2.5 because it added the new building parts that you could only collect from certain planets. So it added something a little extra to building, which was the ability to, to build something to commemorate where you had been, right? There wasn't much of an opportunity for that before, but now you could have things that really showed you had explored. It wasn't just something you bought in the shop. And then multiplayer, I give a four for the community missions as well as, well, maybe mostly for the community missions. Oh, new gestures, yeah. Yeah, I guess it was just for that below average, but you know, they're always making improvements to multiplayer. I will trust the, the process. If I gave this a four, I will trust that 
it was a four. All right, so overall, that score averages out to a 5.375. In other words, a 5.4. So if we go to our No Man's Sky updates ranked based on score, that puts it at the very bottom of the list below the day one patch, which I'm kind of surprised, but I guess that makes sense since it didn't cover any story stuff. So to end this episode, the scored rankings are as follows. Number one, next. Number two, Atlas Rises. Number three, Pathfinder. Number four, The Abyss. Number five, Foundation. Number six, The Day One Patch. And number seven, Visions. Of course, things are going to change a little bit when we mosey on over to my personal rankings. So I also gave Visions a nine because <laughs> I love this update. Ooh, so the question is, I don't think it's better than Foundation. So the question is, am I going to put it above or below Abyss? And I am going to put it above Abyss. And the reason is, one, <laughs> it included the all the improvements from the Abyss, right? So it, it's automatically a little bit better. But in, on top of that, it also added new biomes, which is always a big deal. It added a new procedural treasure, which I loved. It added archaeology, which I also loved. A new enemy type. It added stuff that you could only collect from certain biomes, which I also loved. And, of course, procedural freighter wrecks. Procedural crashed freighters on planets. I mean, that almost puts it above foundation, but I'm, I'm not going to go that crazy. So my new rankings to end this episode personally my personal rankings are number one atlas rises number two next number three foundation number four visions number five the abyss number six pathfinder and number seven is the day one patch <laughs> so looking at these two scorecards you can tell i rank everything way higher than the more objective uh quote unquote objective uh, scores where everything is hovering you know around the sixes <laughs> everything around mine is hovering around the nines so as you can tell i'm a big fanboy. but overall 2018 was a great year for no man's sky first half of the year nothing happened really kind of boring but you know the second half of the year it was exciting we got next a whole bunch of patches post next and then we had the abyss and then three weeks later visions which were both excellent updates in my eyes i know that's kind of a controversial take for some of the old timers who prefer you know the pathfinder or atlas rises days and you know to each their own but for me i i did personally feel like visions and the abyss were just pure content give me new biomes give me new game loops new mechanics new treasure new enemies it was just content 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 so i have pretty much no complaints about the abyss or visions but let me know what you think in the comments below i know everyone has their own preferences and everyone loves and hates different things about different updates you know stuff that i love people might hate um, but i'd love to hear your rankings down below either for just 2018 or overall and uh <laughs> I will, I will be continuing this series, so the next episode will be 2019, which only had two updates, which were Beyond and Synthesis, and I don't know if that's enough to constitute a whole episode. I might also dip into 2020, so I might do the entire Beyond era, and then the episode after that will be the Origins era. Maybe after that there'll be another update post Frontiers so I can have the Frontiers era. But we'll see. That's getting really ahead of myself. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I don't have a script for any of this. I have the the scores that I have from years past. But other than that, it's, I'm just sort of winging this. So uh, thanks for joining me on this journey. Sort of like a, a retrospective more than a review. But I enjoy it either way. So... Of course, thanks again. Leave a like if you liked it, or if you didn't like it, you can you can dislike it if you like. Dislike it if you like. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And um, <laughs> and subscribe if you want to make sure you see the next episode, which 
is coming eventually. So either way, have a good day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.